We'll be with you for the next hour and we want you to join the conversation. Yeah, it's easy to do it on Facebook, as you know, four to five. We stream live every single day. Sometimes there's some really interesting conversations that occur on the live stream. Lots of fun, lots of jokes. <laughs> We're having a good time over there, so we definitely want to make sure that you come join us. Absolutely. A lot to get to today. The big story, health leaders are keeping a close eye on new coronavirus cases. The Delta variant now makes up more than half of all new reported cases in the U.S. The CDC data shows as the contagious virus spreads, three dozen states are reporting a rise in cases. In our state, health leaders are reporting increases in new cases and hospitalizations. I'll give you a closer look in just a minute. And as cases start to rise, Pfizer is meeting with top U.S. health officials to discuss its vaccines and a possible third booster shot. Last week, the drug maker announced it believes a third shot should be rolled out soon. The FDA and CDC quickly pushed back, saying right now, data in the U.S. shows fully vaccinated people are not ending up in the hospital or dying. So a booster shot is not yet needed. Pfizer points to studies in Israel, which shows the vaccine is still highly effective in preventing serious cases, but fully vaccinated people are coming down with mild cases. Moderna's two-dose vaccine uses the same mRNA technology as Pfizer. The company says its most recent data shows its vaccine does protect against the Delta variant, but they believe booster shots will be needed eventually. And then earlier this month, Johnson & Johnson announced a second dose of his vaccine is not necessary because studies still show a single dose provides adequate protection against the Delta variant. And here's a closer look, as I promised. Uh, check out the latest percent positive data. Today's percent positive, 4.5%. It doesn't seem significant on the surface, but this is the highest percent positive our state has reported since May 16th, nearly two months ago. It's easy to see this number was doing really well for much of May and all of June, but when it slowly started to creep upward the past couple of weeks, you can see it really has started to go upward. You'll see the red line at the top of the graph here, which is still the state's goal of 5%. So while the upward trend is concerning, we're still below the state's goal. A North Carolina first responder is raising the alarm about COVID-19 and encouraging everyone to get vaccinated. 26-year-old Corey Spencer, a Pinecroft Sedgefield firefighter, is still recovering after spending weeks in the hospital with the virus. He says he never imagined he would wind up in the ICU or on a ventilator. I was, I was one of those that didn't wear a mask, you know, didn't really, he kind of took it as a joke, you know, it wasn't going to happen to me, I'm young, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. If you can get vaccinated, you need to. Spencer ended up spending 41 days in the hospital. Now he's still recovering and says things like taking a shower take all of his energy. So what questions do you have about the Delta variant and COVID cases in our state? Coming up tonight at 530, a Cone Health doctor will answer those questions live. You'll just need to text them into this number. That's 336-379-5775. As more people are out and about without masks, you might be hearing more people complain about getting common sicknesses. But experts at the Wake Forest School of Medicine say it's too difficult to tell whether that's actually true. Dr. Michael Fitch says the talk about colds becoming more common are not surprising now that people are gathering again. However, he says unlike coronavirus and the flu, a cold is not one of those illnesses that are tracked. I think we'll see as the summer starts to go and, and uh, we start to see more cases, it'll become clear whether or not there really is a large increase in respiratory illnesses at this time. If you do feel like you have a cold, we'll explore ways to get back to health quickly coming up at six. Let's get to your four to five roundup. A Burlington theater repurposed as a courtroom during COVID will reopen as a place to catch a show next month. The Paramount Theater will host a grand reopening on Friday, August 20th. It will be the first time the public is allowed back in after the space was used by the Alamance County court system this past month. The grand opening will include a special performance by the beach band, The Embers. Tickets go on sale this month. And the town of Bisco is mourning the loss of its current serving mayor. Mayor Pro Tem Jean Anderson died in a house fire early this morning. His wife, who was also at home at the time, survived that fire. Anderson served Bisco starting in 2005 when he was elected town commissioner. The state is now investigating the cause of this house fire. 
and rare protests in the streets of Cuba. Sunday, hundreds of people gathered in March demanding better medical care. The protesters expressed frustration over pandemic restrictions, the pace of COVID-19 vaccinations, and what they say is government neglect. Cuba's Communist Party reacted to the protests, blaming the U.S. for the demonstrations. And a brutal heat wave out west as residents in California are sweating. Death Valley usually sees some extreme temperatures, but this week the area hit 130 degrees. Wow, one of the hottest spots on the planet. A thermometer which tracks the temps outside the visitor center showed 134 degrees at one point, but experts say it was a little higher than the official reading. Sidewalk temperatures were even hotter, coming in at 178 degrees. That is hot. I mean, 178, I'm afraid to go outside when it's almost 90 degrees, so right. I can't imagine that. I don't think I've ever experienced that type mm -hmm. of temperature. How about you, Tim? Um, the only way you could do it was if you were in like a sauna or something, Ooh. right? Like that's actually challenging world record territory. The world record is like 134. So they're close to it right there in Death Valley. And if you think about it a different way, that's 40 degrees hotter than we are right now. We're like 90. <laughs> so that's the same as being the difference between 40 degrees and 80 degrees. It's, it's huge. It's a huge difference. And thinking about the sidewalk at 178 degrees, you know, sometimes when you're outside and it's been a hot day, yeah. you step on the sidewalk or the concrete or something and it burns your feet. Yeah. I mean, that really burns your feet, 178 degrees. We could cook lunch out there. Get us an egg, <laughs> yeah. fry it up, 178. That's, that's pretty hot. Yeah, it's dangerous too. And even when we have temperatures like we do, we like to remind people, if you're walking your dog, if it's too hot for you to put your hand on that pavement for about five, 10 seconds, it's too hot for your dog to be walking on too. Use the grass if you have it. That's a much better option. So stay cool, everybody. And uh, I guess we can't complain. I was about to, and then they just told me how hot it is in Death Valley. So let's be thankful, I guess. Still, it's kind of hot and humid around these parts. 89 is the current temperature in Winston-Salem. Boy, you can just see the haze. You can almost visualize the humidity, can't you? We have plenty of that to go around. The nice thing about today is I was just standing here outside. There's a bit of a breeze moving the air around a little bit. Picturesque sky with just a couple of puffy cumulus clouds in downtown Greensboro. Temperature currently at 87. This is an average July day around here for our North Carolina climate. We see the same sky in High Point at 91 currently. Temperatures look just like this generally in the mid to upper 80s. Those smaller numbers are showing you the heat index. What that is, we combine the humidity and the temperature with a formula to actually show you how your body is feeling because your skin can't cool down. Your sweat doesn't evaporate when it's so humid outside. So it actually makes your body work harder than it has. If you're looking for a downpour, it's just not a good day for it so far. We've had a couple of tiny sprinkles. You see them fizzling out though in the last 30 minutes in northern Guilford County near Brown Summit, similar up by Reedsville, North Carolina. So again, these are all but gone and hardly any of you will see those showers. Low chance of rain continues for tonight. Tomorrow, it's just like today. Partly sunny, still hot, still humid, right around 90 for the afternoon. Just about this much of a rain chance. It's a pretty low shot of getting wet for tomorrow. We'll go for a high of about 88, 89 degrees. That's going to be your Tuesday. Coming up, we'll talk more about your seven day forecast. It's a sad day for the High Point men's basketball family. A former head coach, Jerry Steele, passed away. He was 82 years old. Luke Steele impacted so many people throughout his decorated coaching career. Yeah, Chad, Jerry Steele really was in the pillar, really was a pillar, I should say, in the evolution of High Point men's basketball, not to mention he is the winningest coach in school history with 495 victories. But Steele also was a mentor, educator, and friend to so many over his decades of coaching. And one man that knew him really well, current High Point men's basketball coach, Tubby Smith. Smith actually played for Steele back with the Panthers decades ago. He took a moment to share what the iconic coach meant to him in the program. I just want to say how, you know, how tough and how commit, how, how Coach Steele had overcome and, and he fought a good fight. But I was just blessed to have had a chance to play for Coach Steele and then over the last three years, you know, being in his midst and listen to him and talk to him. He was like a father to me and that we could converse and talk about a lot of different things and I would I would confide in him. Steele is survived by his wife Kitty Steele, who spent many years alongside him at High Point University as a Hall of Fame coach in her own right. We'll hear much more from Coach Tubby Smith coming up at five o'clock. Stick around, we're back after the short break.
Mike check Jalen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Finding a job, it can be a challenging task, especially for those who've been incarcerated or have a criminal background. That's why Triad Goodwill is partnering with Guilford Works and NC Works to host the Second Chance Hiring event. It will take place this Wednesday, and here are some photos of past job fairs the group has put on for the general public, but this particular hiring event is geared towards individuals returning to society. Goodwill Industries Director of Special Programs, Rhonda Pass says, job seekers with a criminal history face a number of obstacles. When it comes to employment, they run into, I may have the skill set, I may have the transportation, but when I show up, I have a background. Pass says more ex-offenders have struggled to find jobs in the past year and a half due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and several employers will be participating, including Rice Toyota, National Pipe and Plastic, City of Greensboro, Bojangles, Triad Goodwill, and many more. If they can find someone that can help them navigate, get the skill set, and just give them that opportunity, they turn out to be the best workers that we have. The Second Chance Hiring event will be this Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Shiloh Baptist Church. That's in Greensboro. And Pass also tells me there will be resources and some information available to those looking to have their records expunged. So we'll have all these details on our website. Another workforce trend that we're watching, the end of working from home. Some employees are eager to get back to the office, others not so much. Our news partners in Atlanta break down what's driving decisions about a return to the office. Not everyone will be thrilled to see those welcome back to the office banners. It seems there's a bit of a disconnect between bosses and employees when it comes to life after the pandemic. A survey by PricewaterhouseCoopers found roughly a third of the people questioned want to continue working from home full time. The same survey found very few executives prepared to let go of their office space. This is something that businesses have to manage because they have to retain people. Let's find out why so many bosses want their employees back under one roof. Opinions about working from home have improved over time. Most employees believe it has worked for them and their company. Bouchon Sati of PricewaterhouseCoopers tells us bosses believe office work is good for company culture. In some cases, their clients, their business customers, want them to be back and interact in person. Some leaders want to go back because they see it's a commitment to all of the small businesses that rely on that office. More than half of the employers surveyed believe their employees have been more productive while working from home. They also believe it's important to return to the office where they can collaborate. The majority of bosses understand office life is never going to be the same. Businesses are going to have to go through a set of experiments figure out what works for them, which may be two to three days remote. The employees most eager to return to the office are the least experienced, who feel their time working at home was not as productive. Hmm. Everybody has different opinions very, about this. Very I, I know 
At the beginning of the pandemic, I worked from home for nearly three months, um, and there were some good and bad things about it, right? I mean, I, I, I didn't have to um, drive into work, yeah, which was nice. One. Saved a lot of gas. Yep, that's I, a good I, one. I, uh, I wore gym shorts uh, during the <laughs> newscast. You only had to see me from the waist up, so that was nice. But you know, that's the team camaraderie coming mm -hmm. into the building that that I missed during that, and have enjoyed it now that I'm back. And just communicating with the team, you know, you could just walk down the hall and knock on your news director's door, ask a question, right. rather than having all these back and forth emails, which can be overwhelming. Absolutely, but I think it just depends on what kind of person you are. I would imagine a more introverted person kind of enjoyed being at home by themselves, not having sure. to deal with that daily small talk that you have to deal with yeah. in the office as well. And if you're more of an extroverted person, then coming back in the office and seeing the people that you're used to communicating with on a daily is probably a bonus. Um, me, I'm probably in the middle. I enjoyed my time at home. I cooked a lot more than I yeah. cook okay. now. Right. And I think that's probably the biggest plus for work from home for me. Hope you save some money. Save me some money. I go to the grocery store before I start work. I can get food cooking and I can probably, you know, 15, 20 minutes in, wrap up and we're good to go. I, I felt the part he said about new people with me being new, I couldn't imagine working from home yeah, right, with absolutely. all the technology we have here. Well, we're good to be back in the building. <laughs> and we're on Facebook, so we'll see you in just yeah. a minute. Come join us. I'm having some fun. Let's chat it up. Let's stop and think for a moment. What are your most dominant thoughts? Where does your mind tend to automatically go in those moments where you find it wandering? Now capture that thought because that is your dominant thought. Now depending on that thought, ask yourself, is it growing you forward or moving you backwards? Because that thought will eventually become the foundation of your outer life. There's an old saying, and I know you've heard it, whatsoever a person believes in their heart, so are they. This means that your mind is having a conversation with your life, granting your life full permission through action to become the images that you mentally hold. Look at the current state of your life. It's what your life and mind built. So if you're displeased with the results, just simply redirect your dominant thought and then create a life worth living. This is Coach Lamont reminding you to have your best you day. I'll see you tomorrow. 
across the Piedmont today, we're definitely looking and feeling like summer. No doubt about that. Unmistakable, right? We're seeing this across not just our part of North Carolina, but all of it. Wanted to quickly show you those clouds across the sky, too. This is starting around lunchtime and going all the way to now. Some puffy clouds and occasionally they are looking a bit dark. We haven't seen many showers forming here in the triad, but there are parts of the state that are seeing that kind of the favored positions. You have the mountains. They tend to pop more showers because they're a little cooler uh, in the higher elevations. Also, right along the sea breeze, closer to the beaches, they too are popping some showers this afternoon. Our rain chance will be low, only about 20 to 30 percent for today, for tomorrow. There's just not much of a spark for these to kind of pop up. And I actually think by Wednesday and Thursday, we're looking a little bit drier. But still, all the heat and humidity we can stand thanks to this. It's a Bermuda high. High pressure off the coast pumps in those southerly winds. So no escaping it. It's just going to be hot and humid all week long. It's like July or something. Something. Uh, we're looking at the tropics. Good news here. Just wanted to let you know there's nothing going on. Caribbean is clear. The Atlantic is clear as well. None of those tropical waves have a good chance of developing. And part of the reason why you heard us talk about this last summer, we get these waves of dust actually coming in across the ocean. They start over in the Saharan desert. If they have strong winds blowing off the continent, you can actually bring that dustiness or that dry air into the Atlantic Ocean and hurricanes hate that. It prevents them from forming. So when you have those outbursts, it's usually a quiet period of activity that should last for at least a week or two. For tonight, there's a low chance of a storm. I don't think many of you will see that. Our low is 70. For tomorrow, hot day again. We're up to 88 degrees, partly sunny skies, low chance of that afternoon storm. Forecast every single day kind of looks the same, doesn't it? There will be better chances of pop-up storms this weekend, looking at Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. That's your forecast. You're watching the 4 to 5. Check this out, one space flight closer to booking a trip to outer space. Billionaire Richard Branson is back on Earth today, just about 24 hours after making history as the first private citizen to reach space. Very cool. Yeah, the flight beat efforts by Amazon and SpaceX as companies aim to bring tourists to space.
Welcome to Space Unity 22. This is the moment Sir Richard Branson took one giant leap into the space tourism business. During this test flight, Virgin Galactic rocketed its space plane Unity into the final frontier, and Branson became the first person to blast off in his own spaceship. He beats Amazon's Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin into space by just nine days. My complete experience for lifetime. Virgin Galactic's mothership carried Unity to about 45,000 feet. Release, release, release. Then the space plane dropped, rocketing up at Mach 3, more than three times the speed of sound until it reached the edge of space. During several minutes of weightlessness, Branson and everyone aboard reached a peak altitude of about 53 miles over the New Mexico desert. This test flight was a marketing bonanza for Virgin Galactic. It hopes to start taking paying customers on space joyrides starting next year. Main gear touchdown. When Unity touched down, the British billionaire got what he has chased for nearly 20 years, his astronaut wings. The whole thing was just magical. The mission statement that I wrote inside my spacesuit was to uh, turn the dream of space travel into a reality for my grandchildren who, who are here, for your grandchildren, uh, and for many people who are alive today, for everybody. Branson never stops promoting. His latest is a sweepstakes drawing for charity, two seats on a future flight to the edge of space. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Now that's awesome. Uh -huh, yeah, but <laughs> so the price is not cheap either. Twenty, excuse me, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to go to space, and you'd think that maybe it scare people away, mm -hmm. but it's not. Virgin Galactic says it already has six hundred reservations. Well, it sounds like I got 600 people I could ask for a loan out there. Yeah, right. <laughs> Goodness. You could buy a house with that much money. Sure. So would you do it? I would do it if I got the opportunity. That's the opportunity of a lifetime. Right. So if I had the extra money or maybe won a contest or something, mm -hmm. totally. What about no you? way I would go out of space. Really? No. I don't want to. I don't want to know. Do you do roller coasters? Do you like yeah, I do room? roller coasters. I do airplanes. Fine. I did a helicopter before, but I'm... I'm not going out of space. I don't want to do that. I don't want to see that. I don't want to know. I would do it. I would do it. As long as we came back. You know, like, you know, they were talking about all these yeah, trips the to if, Mars. Right? Like, <laughs> you go to the Mars, you can't come back. So yeah. that's, but as long as you can come back on this and one. They could, can we talk about where they did the test flight over the New Mexico desert? Mm -hmm. Would you rather fly over the desert or would you rather fly over the ocean? Uh, the I desert. Don't know. I don't know about I'm that. I'm not way. sure. Would it make a difference? I'm not sure. <laughs> what I thought was so interesting about this story was that um, that space is only 52 miles above That's, yeah. Earth. Yeah. Right? Wow. You, uh, you would assume that it would be... A little bit more than that? A little bit more. A couple hundred, maybe yeah. a thousand. I don't know much about miles space. Miles of But yeah, I, I was just surprised to see that it's really only 52 miles mm. north. Well, I'm glad they got back safely. Yep. And I look forward to seeing more of this in the Richard future. Richard Branson doing Absolutely. all the cool stuff that we can't afford to do. He's so cool. <laughs> we'll be right back. Would you want to be over the ocean or over the desert? I'd probably do ocean, bro. Ocean seems. You just seem a little, little bit safer. Yeah, yeah. A little fail-safe. Hello. I'm still here. I hope you are one too. Hi, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Hello, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. Nobody likes when my slow on the draw, I got nothing to chaw, I hanker for a hunk of cheese. Mike check Jalen. Mike check Jalen. Jalen would rather his his.
Well, welcome back to your four to five. I'm Lauren Coleman. Eric and Maddie had the day off, but we have Chad Silver on the desk with us today. Good to be here. Always you know, fun. I, I can't um, get enough of the show, so I always find my way to <laughs> sneak back in. So I'm going to be here for a couple of days. I hope that's okay with you. We're all always having a good time on this show, both on air, but also on line, yeah. Facebook page. Come join us on Facebook. We're having a lot of fun there. Absolutely. Uh, we got a big story to get to today, and it's a concerning one. It's developing news in Greensboro. We're learning new details of a violent weekend. Police say five people were shot in two separate shootings. Yeah, in both cases, police officers responded to nightclubs where these shootings happened. So just before 1 a.m. Sunday, investigators say someone shot two people outside of 117 Sofa Bar and Loud on North Green Street. Both victims are expected to be okay. Minutes later, another shooting was reported. This one at Lucky Skate Shop and Lounge on Patterson Street. First responders found three people shot and took them to the hospital, where at last checked, they are in stable condition. No arrests have been made in either shooting. The violence comes as city leaders discuss a nightlife safety ordinance aimed at cracking down on violence here in Greensboro. Certainly know what the hotspots are. We are calling ALE in um, sooner in the process. So um, while this is being worked on, there is a lot of activity that is going on. And the violence, it's not just happening in Greensboro. Right now, Winston-Salem police are looking for a suspect in a drive-by shooting that left a 12-year-old girl injured. It happened at a home on Pleasant Street last night. Investigators say someone in a car fired shots into the home. One of the bullets hit the girl in her leg. No one else was injured, but police say they think this was a targeted attack, but so far, no arrests have been made. All right, let's get to your four to five roundup now. First up, we are still waiting to hear who won our state's second vaccine lottery. Last week, we'll remember state leaders drew the names for the million dollar prize and the college scholarship. We knew it would take days to confirm the winner or find an alternate. Of course, we will keep you in the loop. This week, some parents will start receiving child tax credit payments. The first round is set to go out on Thursday. Now, usually this money comes as a yearly payment on tax returns, but this year, as part of the American Rescue Plan, the money was increased and parents had the option to get the payment advanced. Again, the payments start this week and will occur monthly through December. The end of the road is coming to the Tanger Center. Boys to Men will perform with the Greensboro Symphony on September 18th. Tickets go on sale this Friday. We've got more information on WFMYNews2.com. And you know, there are, there, it's, it's one thing to be able to see a band yes. in concert from months, or not months, years ago, decades ago, but to see them perform with the Greensboro Symphony. And now, since we've been in this pandemic, it's nice to get some live music, and of course, Boys to Men. I was about to sing The End of the Road. You want to sing it with me? No, but I will listen to you <laughs> sing it. We'll save it for the Facebook Live. Okay, I was getting my beat ready. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's just such a cool thing. Yeah. And, and I, am, I could not be happier that the Tanger Center is now able to promote shows that it is now hosting. You know, it'd been so long. I mean, they didn't even get to have one show in yeah. there before the pandemic happened. So it's just this really big, awesome building that's sitting there without being used. So uh, it's great that we keep hearing about all these shows coming to it because um, we deserve it. Yeah, we definitely do. It's gonna be an exciting upcoming season. I still haven't made my way there yet, so I'm excited to see one of these live shows. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it as well. Well, we do have some more news. The city of Greensboro and the Greensboro Fire Department, they are providing a unique experience for local teenage girls this week. Uh, WFM 1 News 2's Jalen Gilkey saw how Camp Spark is laying the groundwork for a career path. Well, this week, the Greensboro Fire Department is hosting its first ever Camp Spark for Girls. All week, these young ladies will learn what it takes to be a firefighter the, and the importance of self-confidence and perseverance. Um, so today we're out here for Camp Spark. It's a firefighting camp for high school girls. Basically, our goal is to introduce young women to the fire service. Brittany King is a senior firefighter for the city of Greensboro. She came up with the idea for Camp Spark because she knows the importance of continuing to diversify our fire stations across the country. The fire service is predominantly male, and um, right now in, this, in the country, the fire service is less than 11% female. And a big part of the reason behind that is because of lack of representation. So she and some of the other female firefighters from across the triad put together this four-day camp to inspire the next generation of firefighters, just like Abby Linick. It's nice to know that there's other women out there that are like me that want to be a firefighter. And this camp is pretty much just saying, 
You can. Don't let anything stop you. You can do it. Abby says she's wanted to be a firefighter ever since she was five years old. Now she's 14 and wants to become an inspiration for the young girls that share the same dream she has. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of male firefighters and there's not enough female firefighters. And I think being a, fi a female firefighter would be a great mo role model for like future generations. Although this year's camp is full, I have attached a link to all the information you'll need to know to sign your team up for next year's camp. And all that information will be on the web story on WFNYNews2.com. Well, if you like summer weather, this is for you this whole week. And maybe more than that, probably uh, several weeks to maybe a couple of months. If you don't like summer weather, well, try not to think about it too much because this is what we're stuck with. Upper 80s to low 90s. Those are the air temperatures right now across the Piedmont. And when you look at the humidity, it is, of course, sticky and humid and making it feel a little bit more hot than it actually is. Dew point temperatures in the mid and upper 60s, close to 70 in many areas. That's really that Florida level humidity we talk about. Once that dew point gets close to 70, you're really feeling that stickiness. Not much in the way of rain activity for us this afternoon, but looking over the mountains, they've had several pop up showers. Same story down near the coast at the Sea Breeze location. It's usually easier to pop a couple of showers there. I've zoomed into Rockingham County now. Did want to give you a little bit of a look of a tiny shower here just to the north of Ruffin. That's the only one on my radar right now I can show you. Everyone else is dry. And you might like to get a shower, but there's just not many in the cards for today or for tomorrow. There could be one or two that pop up on our Thursday afternoon. Sorry, Tuesday. Got ahead of myself a little bit there. Wednesday and Thursday look pretty dry as well. A cool thing you can see tonight in the sky. Set your alarm for this and let the kids know. 10:15, you'll get a very good chance to see the International Space Station. How do you see it? Well, you're just going to look up at 10:15. It's going across the sky, going southwest to northeast. Looks like a bright white dot. It doesn't blink. I'll be live on my Facebook page showing you the st the station. You know the drill, you get to the restaurant and there's a QR code for you to use. Those were out before in some places, but since COVID, it seems it to be the rule, right? Then, right. you know, getting the <laughs> paper in there. Do you see it sticking around? I do. I think it's quick, mm -hmm. it's convenient, it's clean. I don't and mind. it's cheaper for the restaurants, oh. right? I mean, they don't have to print out all these yeah. menus. Then when something changes, you have to print more menus. And, and then you don't have to wipe down those sticky menus. That's right. the point. Yeah. Okay, so most of us have used a QR code before, but do you know what QR stands for? Um, qu questioning, <laughs> I don't know. Quality. <laughs> re these are I'm all good sure. guesses. Right. These are all good guesses. Okay, here's what it is. A QR code I want you to scan with your phone, and you are going to scan one with your phone soon, so get your phone ready, okay? In the meantime, here's a few fun facts that I learned about QR codes. Okay, for instance, QR stands for Quick Response Code. According to QRGenerator.com, the quick part is specifically in reference to being quickly read by a cell phone. A QR code is the next generation of a barcode. So the barcode only has horizontal information to read. The QR code has information in the horizontal and vertical dots or lines, which allows for more information to be in the code. So I looked around to see what else QR codes were being used for. A Denver doctor made these bracelets that link back to your COVID vaccine info so you don't have to carry your card around with you. Historic cemeteries, they are using QR codes on headstones instead of manned tours to tell the stories of the community ancestors. I thought that was pretty cool. And then right here at home during tournament time, of course, QR codes are used to scan tickets. No paper required. Now, WFMY News 2 has a QR code. This is where you take out your phone, folks. You got to be able to scan that QR code. All you're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it, okay? You put your phone on picture like your camera right and then you just hover it over the QR code and when I did that there's a little link at the top and that's what you're going to click so let me get out of the way so that you can see the QR code for yourself that's right just hover your phone over the TV there so that you can see that QR code and you'll see that link and that link takes you to a donation page. Now this is the Tanya's Two Wishes birthday page. My wishes include putting food on the table for our neighbors. The goal is 50 
thousand meals and we need online money and in-person food donations so the qr code gets you there to donate online or you can join us on tuesday july 20th at the harris teeter at friendly shopping center you can see some folks have already started to donate online and i just want to say thank you thank you and thank you Even though it's 2021, detailed data from the 2020 census still isn't available, and that has some of our viewers wondering, what's taking so long? Sure, our Verify team looked into why there's a holdup. Normally by now, we have detailed data from the U.S. Census that helps redraw legislative districts due to population changes. But we don't yet, and that has Verify viewer Laverne asking if the government even completed it. So, Laverne, let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Census Bureau and the National Conference of State Legislatures. As you can imagine, this all starts with the pandemic. The census says it planned to start household visits in the spring of 2020, but that was right when the U.S. began shutting down. Counting was delayed by several months, but it did happen. On April 26th of this year, the census reported a final tally of more than 331 million Americans. However, it wasn't the full data. The law requires detailed information to help redraw legislative districts, and the census says that is delayed until mid-August. The National Conference of State Legislatures says the impact is trickling down to about 20 states who are mandated to redistrict this year, including New Jersey and Virginia, which have state elections this November that were supposed to be based on the new data. So, Laverne, we can verify it's true. The 2020 census was completed, but it's taking longer than usual to get the results because of the pandemic. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Hey, do you have something you want verified? It's pretty easy. Just send us an email with your question. The address is verify at WFMY.com. Did you go to the movies over the weekend? Well, a lot of people did. Black Widow, which is Marvel's latest superhero flick, made $158 million worldwide on its opening weekend. 
There was also an option for people who wanted to stay home. You could rent the movie on Disney Plus for 30 bucks. Marvel says the movie made $60 million on Disney Plus rentals alone. So that brings us to this question. Have you gone back to the movie theaters now that they're open or are you sticking to watching those movies from home? So I, before the pandemic, I didn't really go to movies mm -hmm. too often because I, um, I, I'd have to get the popcorn and I have to get the, slush, <laughs> the slushy and all the candy and everything. And um, it just, I, I was trying to cut back yeah. on calories and that doesn't help. It'll be like 99 bucks by the end of all that list uh, right, too. Right, exactly. Uh -huh. How about you? I, I haven't gone back yet. I'm not against it, but nothing has really caught my eye yet. But mm -hmm. I love the movie theater experience. I love the popcorn. Uh, that's my favorite part of it. Yeah. Uh, but thirty dollars to watch it on Disney Plus. That sounds like a lot. So while I, I that was my first thought too. Yeah. But then I thought about you know think about having like a family movie night mm -hmm. or having the neighbor kids over. And thirty bucks really isn't that much if you think about if you had ten kids there. That's three dollars per kid and that's a lot cheaper than actually taking them to the movie theater. And then you can make the popcorn, mm -hmm. you can make the drinks, and it ends up being a lot cheaper. But yeah, $30 if it were just per person, yeah. that's a lot. But if you can get a whole group of people together, it's actually pretty cheap. That's a good bet, because I was like, I might wait for it to come out on DVD right. for 30 bucks. How about you? Let us know in the Facebook section, on the, the comments section. The comments section, on come Facebook. talk to us. <laughs> yeah, we're there, <laughs> we'll see you in a bit. We are digging into the News 2 archives for this story today. Do you remember what happened at the North Carolina coast this day, 1996? Yeah, it was actually the day that Hurricane Bertha hit, damaging several areas near Wilmington. The storm hit as a Category 2 with winds around 116 miles per hour at the frying pan tower off Cape Fear. 
On land, gusts hit 90 miles per hour at Curie and Wrightsville beaches. The storm destroyed several fishing and beach piers. One in four homes at North Topsail Beach lost their roofs. Bertha was an early severe storm that year, but often gets overlooked because just a few months later, Hurricane Fran hit and became the most expensive natural disaster in state history. Yeah, so here's the track of the storm. And if you don't remember this much here in the triad, well, there's good reason. We felt very little, if any, impact Locally, this storm was one that just tracked right along the coast and didn't head inland. But for the Wilmington area, it was real bad. Also, too, the Outer Banks always gets that eastern side of the storm. They had issues as well. Went right up through Greenville and then up the northeast coast, even bringing 70 mile per hour gusts to Connecticut. So it still packed a punch for a while. Uh, but 96, a very bad year for hurricanes. The 90 as a whole were a bad decade for hurricanes. You got Bertha, Fran, Floyd, Dennis. Bonnie, a whole bunch of bad ones for North Carolina. Wow. Hmm. And uh, several of you shared your memories of the storm on Tim's Facebook page. Mark says, spent several weeks helping my parents repair their beach house after Bertha. Then Fran hit and destroyed the house completely. Amy shared, I was at Myrtle Beach with my BFF and her parents. We were some very upset teenagers when they announced we had to evacuate. Then it seemed like we sat in traffic for days just trying to get home. And Jim remembers riding out in Beaufort. It was his first hurricane. And here's a look at the WFNY crew covering the storm at the coast. Wow. Y'all recognize anybody there? Jeff Johnson's in the yellow jacket right there. Okay. Yes, right. that's right. <laughs> Very cool. And former reporter <laughs> Stephanie shared the name. Uh, she named her raincoat Bertha after that storm. Boy, and to Tim, uh, uh, you worked in Wilmington before you came here. Obviously, mm -hmm. it was well after 1996, but I imagine people in that area, um, it, they'll always remember this one. You ask anybody who lives in North Carolina a long time, they all have storm stories, mm -hmm. and it's always about hurricanes, 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 especially in that area. Bertha it does get forgotten because as bad as it was, Two months later, Fran was so much worse. Wow. So it was just kind of, you know, you can't catch your breath. Sometimes you get in that pattern where one comes in after the other. But uh, for me, I actually didn't even know until I was looking up the data today, a lot of piers were destroyed before Fran even came in. Wow. So uh, it was bad enough to do that kind of a damage. And you've been at the coast, Chad, when it goes on. Uh, it's kind of a, a wild experience being there for a hurricane. And then we always go interview people who are either staying there or live there. And we sure. ask them about different hurricanes. And Bertha is one that, that constantly comes up for people. I think if they use it as a gauge to determine how bad a hurricane is. Especially North Topsail. If y'all go to Topsail Beach a lot, you know the north side of Topsail, very susceptible to storms. This was kind of the beginning of big troubles for North Topsail. Fran was really bad. Uh, and, you know, just after that, years later, you know, the, the, this decade has been no picnic either. Mm -hmm. We've had Matthew, we've had Florence. I think we tend to think the, the ones in the past were worse, but the ones lately have been really bad too. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that really goes to say, I mean, it's saying something that one in four homes on North Topsail lost yeah. their roofs. I mean, that is incredible damage. And then got finished off with friends. Really bad. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And our team always on top of it. Absolutely. Storm season. All right. Well, coming up straight ahead on WFNY News 2 at 5, caught on camera, the moment two suspects break into a Greensboro home. The homeowner saw the intruders on a surveillance camera and rushed home. What happened when she arrived? That's ahead in five minutes. Stick with hand. A homeowner took matters into her own hands and drove after two people who tried to break. Hello, hello, it's a five o'clock show. Hi there, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island. Hi there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
my mic should be on. Let's see if we have a good quote of the day. Do um, you want to hear the quote? Okay. Is everything good for my chick? Yeah. Hey, we are out here off of Wendover. It is very busy during the rush hour. We're overmodulated, Kyle. Keep talking. We should have it lowered now. It should all be good. It is nice and breezy today. It's time for my two cents, grocery shopping. It seems like a simple chore, but sometimes it can be a daunting task. Throughout the years, I've discovered some of the biggest mistakes one can make when filling up their cart. Number one, going shopping on an empty stomach. This, my friends, is a big no-no. Going down the different aisles with hunger pains can cause you to buy up everything in the store. That extra bag of potato chips that you didn't plan on buying suddenly ends up on the conveyor belt when checking out. To combat this, try eating a light meal beforehand or try chewing gum. It may sound silly, but some studies show chewing gum while you shop can help you to stay focused and discard the smell of certain foods around you. Number two, shopping without a list. Now, this can go one of two ways. If you don't come in with a game plan, you may end up buying too much food, which can lead to wastefulness. Or you may buy too little food and can find yourself running back to the market just a few days later. Now number three, shopping at the wrong time of day. According to Google Map Trends, the busiest day to shop at the grocery store is Saturdays between 12 and 3 p.m., while Mondays at 8 a.m. are less hectic. Shopping with less crowds may give you more time to comparison shop. Now, of course, there are more tricks that can help you have a better grocery shopping experience, but these three may help to save you some time and some extra cash. That's my two cents. That's your four to five. WFMY News 2 at five starts now. Six people are recovering right now after being shot in Greensboro over the weekend. Investigators say they were hurt in three unrelated shootings. Many of you sharing your concerns about these crimes on social media. Two Once and Knows Ben Briscoe asked.